Okay, so the ones that were bred, maybe bred, was Luna, and then it could have been the two girls. Yeah, because they had just, yeah. But these three are pregnant, or these four. four these four are pregnant. So Kelly they couldn't Tatum, have got to yeah. them. Okay, okay. So it was really only those. Oh wait, and Willow, is she over here? Willow. Oh, and Winnie, Willow and Winnie. Are you guys on your stump? Did you guys get bred? Hi. Uh, you can tell us. Well guys, about two weeks ago, somebody left the buck latch open. I don't know who it was, but it was somebody that lives in this house. And we didn't notice it till a couple hours later. So any of these goats could be pregnant, except for the already pregnant ones. You guys had a fun day, didn't you? Hmm. Good times. Surely dad didn't leave the bucket open. It Surely, like there's no way he would forget <laughs> to put the carabiner on there. Like no. he's done like a lot of times before. He wouldn't do it again. So our options are we could either let them be pregnant or we can give them a shot of what's called lutealize. It's a hormone that basically makes it so the body can't keep a pregnancy. Okay, so the two girls, they're a little bit young. I was gonna hopefully breed them if they reached 50 pounds by November, but they're they're not quite there yet. Yeah, but they still have gone into heat, so. And Luna is definitely no-no because she's retired. Luna, you're retired. You're retired, don't look at us like that. And then Willow and Winnie, they're, they definitely can't stay pregnant if they are pregnant because they're- They've just got the weird <laughs> legs. They're the line that we definitely don't wanna continue. Now we don't know for sure if any of them were bred because our cameras were actually down that day. So it's anyone's guess. You can sometimes tell by the discharge on the doe's back end, but I didn't see anything on any of these does. So the rule of thumb is if the buck was with the does, you assume that they got bred. The vet said that the two young ones, Olive and Daphne, they're just about ready to be bred. They really need to be more like eight months old and they just hit seven months. So you would think that that's close enough, but when they're young does like this, it's, it's just a little too close. Well, Lydia, unfortunately, this is just the reality of keeping bucks. They're going to escape. It's going to happen. Every time we tell us, we tell ourselves we are not going to forget the carabiner, but then we do. But actually, Dad said he's gonna fix it and it's never gonna happen again. Never. So I don't know if any of these girls were actually in heat or if they were bred, but we're not gonna take any chances. So we're gonna definitely prevent the pregnancies from happening in those four does, four or five, <laughs> and the four that are pregnant, they're far enough along that we're safe. And yes, we have irrigation right now, and Salem's favorite thing in the irrigation is to look for the bugs that come up and try to eat them. Really good guardian dog right there. Keeping us safe from the bugs. <laughs> Somebody definitely left the latch open. Not me, but somebody in this house. So today I'm gonna use my Kevin's Craft talents to make this foolproof, just in case somebody doesn't latch it. Okay, even if they use their smart nose to <laughs> lift this up, okay, at least it's not opening. Yeah, okay. And they can't do it. They can't only, really do only it, only yeah. The girls could do it. Only Luna, and Luna will never do it. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, put the carabiner in there. How to close it. There you go. Can't reach it, look, look. No, oh, can't do it. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All right guys, today is the day that we're gonna try to lift this thing up, take the dog glue out, and lay it back down. Is it gonna work? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I saw 
all that crack just now. So we can still use it. All right. Well, it did crack. And actually, Kevin was saying it might crack because we noticed a tiny little crack here after we finished last time. And he said, should I fix it before we take it off? And I said, no. But we're still gonna use it. It's actually perfect form, everything we want. We're gonna add a few more layers on it anyway. But there's our oven. Well, it cracked right in the middle, just like we planned. Now, ovens crack all the time, and we're just going to put grout there, and uh, it's going to be a great form for us. We're not really concerned because the next steps are to use chicken wire and blanket insulation and then another layer of mortar on the outside. So that will give us the strength that we've always planned on. And then these clay bricks that we cook the pizza on are the best material because clay is a really good at holding the heat in and is not an insulating material. It's more of just holding the heat and staying in there. So it's gonna be perfect to cook the pizza on these clay bricks. She's gonna get all messy. Let it out, let her out, let her out. Whoa. Rainy! <laughs> Kevin! Uh oh, oh, the uh -oh. umbrella fell down, so it's getting soaked. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Say love, you love the water? Yeah. It doesn't rain very often in Arizona, so you guys know we're gonna, we're gonna tell you about it. We're gonna get excited and come outside and watch the rain. Whoa, I love it. So fun. Okay guys, I have been sprouting potatoes in my pantry. And so today we're going to do what's called chitting potatoes. Now, you can just take a potato and put it in the ground and it will grow, but there's not a guaranteed germination rate or sprouting rate, so it's a little bit iffy. So the best way to ensure that your potatoes are going to sprout is to get them to bud out first in the pantry and then to chip them. Let's do that. I've got them back here in this bag. And there's a lot of debate on whether you should sprout potatoes in the dark or in the light. And in my experience, it's better to put them in the dark with a little bit of light shining in so that they have a desire to like grow and move towards that light. So in here, we have got a bunch of potatoes that have already budded out or started to sprout. All right, so we wanna leave a couple of sprouts on each potato, so. And finally, I'm going to just turn them over so the cut side is facing up and then let them sort of dry up a little bit. And it'll take a few days and then we will plant our potatoes, which hopefully will be ready by about Christmas time. Christmas dinner. Meanwhile, in the garden today, I'm doing a little bit of prep work on our green beans. They are bushing out so well, and they're just about ready to flower, which means we'll have green beans soon. So what I'm gonna do today to make sure that they keep doing well is I'm gonna weed this bed just a little bit. We've got a, just a tiny bit of grass popping up, a few weeds here and there. And then I'm gonna add some wood chips, but I actually forgot I had to go get one thing that I have to add first before the wood chips. And that is diatomaceous earth, which is sort of a natural pest control. See, pill bugs love to eat the roots of green beans. And I know this from experience because last year they ate all the roots and killed the plants. So diatomaceous earth is a good pest control for them. So I'll add that around the base of each plant and then top it with cedar wood chips. In Arizona, we always have to mulch because we're always trying to retain the moisture and keep things from drying out. 
I like to add the cedar wood chips because it acts as another form of pest control. Cedar is really aromatic and so it deters pests. So hopefully with these two things, we'll have nice healthy green beans in just a few weeks. And it'll be kind of interesting to see how much we can produce on this 25 by three foot row. Oh, and our shy cat, Pepper Pumpkin, decided to move from the haystack to the garden shed. She came to say hi from a distance. Okay, boys, since we picked all of the names for the chicks and we were kind of like decisive about it, we're gonna let you guys name a couple of them so that you can have a say in the names. Oh, okay. Bandits. <laughs> Bandit? I mean, I I love that name. That's I love it. Perfect. It's that's better. Okay, Ethan. What name do you want? Um, Pick one to name. Floof three. <laughs> Floof or Flurf? Flurf. Three, I don't know. Which one is Floor Three? Uh, the biggest one. The biggest one? <laughs> Which yes. one even is that? That's Winona. It used the to be Winona, one. but we'll we'll name that Floor Three. That's oh, a sure. good one. <laughs> we love those names. We those love are those perfect. names. Remember when we canned those tomatoes back in July? Well, today we're gonna use them. Since garden tomatoes already have a ton of flavor, I'm just gonna dump the whole thing in a pot, add a bunch of Italian seasoning and garlic, and let it simmer. So if you haven't guessed already, we're making sort of a spaghetti sauce. And I know spaghetti is sort of just like one of those blah meals that your mom used to make, but this is amazing, trust me. I also remembered that I have fresh basil in the garden and didn't even use it. Oh my gosh, what am I thinking? But these tomatoes we grew this summer have so much flavor, it'll be fine. Now, you can't have spaghetti without meatballs, so that's what we're gonna make. We start with a slurry of some breadcrumbs and egg and milk, and then we'll add a bunch of different seasonings along with some Parmesan cheese. Now all we have to do is just mix it together and then throw it on a pan. For some reason, I always used to mess up meatballs, like they were always too tough. But I have this recipe that I use that makes them perfect. And here's the best part. Once they've finished cooking, which is only about five minutes under the broiler, we're gonna finish cooking them in the pasta sauce as it simmers. This helps soften the meatballs and gets them nice and flavorful and just makes this so much better. The end result is so rich and almost creamy, even though there's not any cream in this. It's a pretty basic dinner, but one of my favorites, and I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, Tilly, let's see how much milk you have. Come on. Oh, you went right up the stand. <laughs> Guys, it's a momentous occasion. Tilly went up the stand right as we were drying her up. So it only took her three years to learn it, but she's she's got it down. You're so smart. You figured it out. So I have decided to dry up Fern since we were supposed to dry her up. She's about two months away from delivering. And also I decided to dry up Tilly because, you know, I just have this feeling that Tilly needs a break. Um, she had that cold back in August and now she's pregnant and I just, just have a feeling that she needs a bigger break and I might as well dry them up both at the same time. Looks like she still has some. Now the trick is to milk just halfway out. So that's what we're gonna keep doing just until she dries up, however long that takes. And then finally, we like to spray this thing called um, Fight Back. It has alcohol in it. It's a cold spray that helps close up the teat and then it also disinfects it. Because when you're drying up a goat, they're more likely to get mastitis because there's a lot of milk left over in there and you don't want that to happen. So that's, that's why we're doing that. Just do... Little spray. And that's it for today, Tilly. Good job. Okay. Be nice to your friends today, okay? Bye. No, 
Now, where is Fern? Fern? He's way over there by the bucks. Oh, we gotta take a detour and say hi to Luna. Did you find a good spot? You want a leaf? Look, I brought you a treat. You having a good day? Just chilling? Let's get one for Fern so she doesn't run away. She's a bit of a flighty goat. Here you go, look what I got you. Oh my goodness. The goats are usually waiting by the gate so I don't have to walk them that much. But because I wanna show next year, I've been trying to walk them more. And in the winter, when it's not so hot outside, we'll do a lot more of it. But Fern's actually pretty good. She's a very calm walker. Maybe she'll show really well. Maybe she'll win something. The goats like to run around with Salem now. They used to be afraid of her at first. Look how big Salem is. But now they're just, they just sort of run around with her in the pasture. She's gonna go back over there, herd the chickens. It is so nice to be able to trust Salem. When we first got her, since we knew she wasn't a livestock guardian dog, I was a little bit nervous. I, I wondered if she was actually gonna be able to be, you know, trained to be safe around animals, but I'm totally confident now. She's, she's not gonna go after them. She loves them. She's been raised around them enough as a puppy. So hopefully now she just has her one job of barking off any predators or people that come around here. Goats are having a big fight today. I think because Willow just went into heat and Winnie just went into heat. And then over there, <laughs> you can't see it, but over there we have Olive and Daphne just both in heat. Oh, let me see. Oh, it's... they're both over there by the bucks. So it's good. It looks like the Ludolice did its job, brought them all back into heat. I don't know if any of them were pregnant. They could have all not been pregnant and it just we just kind of forced them to go back in heat. But at least we know that they're not pregnant and Willow and Winnie will never be bred. Whereas Olive and Daphne, the plan is to breed them in about a month, about the end of October, maybe beginning of November. And Luna went right into heat like the day I gave her the Ludolize, so she's fine. <laughs> she's she's definitely not bred and um, living the life of going into heat. Goats don't have menopause. So Luna might go into heat for a long time. And now Fern. She's drying up nicely. She's nice and tiny, not very tight. She's always a little, little bit of a dancer on the stand. Settle down. So Fern is good. She's been drying up just fine, which is perfect because she is going to be due in just a couple months. I'm really excited about the combination of Fern with Zorro. I feel like they are going to make such a great pair. I haven't shown Fern yet and I haven't milk tested her yet, so she's not really like proven. But when I look at her body structure, I think she's great. So we'll see what these babies look like. I'm excited. Kitty's just gonna drink the milk. That's okay, we're not gonna save it, so I'm just gonna let her drink it out of the pail. When you're milking to go only half out and their milk is gradually going down, it doesn't actually taste as good. It gets a little bit uh, minerally salty, so we normally toss the milk. Okay, for, sorry for taking so long. All right. Okay, try to make friends with someone other than your mom today. Okay, how are you? You come into heat? You're a silent heat girl. Having a big fight today, all of them. Oh my gosh. What's going on, Salem? Everybody is in heat. So it's a little crazy today. <laughs> all right, Salem, come on, let's go. Too bad you guys are related and you're also not able to be bred because <laughs> you would make a pretty cute pair of goats. Are you just chilling, Tilly? You okay? Or are you dying? <laughs> She's okay. All right guys, thanks for joining us today. If you wanna watch the video where we first got Napoleon, our red buck, you can go ahead and click right here.